The episode begins with Jamie and Logan on their way to Karakay. After their encounter with the goons from earlier, Jamie and Logan had managed to escape after Jamie accidentally killed the leader of the crew, Mason, soon after the wolf attack. They are currently heading towards Karakay in a car that Logan had managed to get. Just a few miles away from Karakay, their car breaks down. Logan insists on repairing the car but Jamie decides to walk the remaining distance. Eventually, after some discussion, they decide to walk. Just as they are about to reach Karakay, they notice a huge light coming from a distance. Jamie rushes to see what it was and they realize that the whole Karakay was set on fire. Back at Davies' hideout Abe, Jack and Mitch quickly rush to open the gate and rescue Chloe. Chloe is barely breathing by the time they take her out but hoping that perhaps there was something they could do. Mitch and Jack take her back to the ship's lab. Mitch administers some adrenaline into her body to bring her back to her senses. Chloe comes back to life barely just to utter two words, Karakay and the courier. Jack understands that Jamie must be in Karakay, but doesn't know what she meant by the courier. Before they could ask her further though, Chloe passes away. The whole group is in mourning for Chloe and most of them blame Markin for her death. While in the lab the next day, Jack says his last goodbye to Chloe. As he takes off her bracelet he starts crying but the tears seem to be black and thick goo. He quickly hides away when Markin enters the room to apologize. Markin tries to explain her situation, and that she would have died too if she didn't shut the door but Jack doesn't seem to be in the mood to consider her point of view. Elsewhere, Jamie and Logan decide to take a look at the burning city, and head toward it. As the duo heads toward Karakay, they suddenly hear the roars of bears. Terrified the two run away senselessly towards a nearby fence, and barely escape the animals, but just then they are captured by three masked men. The men take them to a local school surrounded by the barrier they jumped earlier the place seems to be filled with all the people from Karakay, and the two are met by the leader lady who explains that it was them who had set fire to their town to keep the animals from finding them and they had hidden all the people that were alive in the school waiting for help to arrive. Jamie and Logan are actually treated very well and given proper food, running water, and warm clothes. However, as Jamie and Logan spend their time in the school, they start to feel that they are unwelcome and that there was something off about the whole place. Later that day, when they are at the food court, the girl serving them food, Maddie gives them a pretty eerie message. She purposely drops their food to secretly tell them to run away on the first chance that they get. Back at the ship, as the group is discussing what to do next, their ship suddenly starts to land on its own. They are all convinced that this must be the work of Davies who probably hacked their ship's functions. They quickly hide with their guns pointing at the door but instead of Davies, Allison enters the scene. Allison, Mitch's stepmom, Allison, tells them that she was the actual owner of the ship and had been working with Elena against the Noah objective. She requests their help with one of her problems. Mitch however doesn't seem to trust his stepmother that much and refuses to help her. He claims that he would go to save Jamie on foot if she takes away her stupid plane. Allison then offers to not only help them save Jamie, but also reveal what Chloe meant by the courier if they decide to help her, an offer that they cannot refuse. Allison then explains that she has one of the largest orchards in the East Coast, but all of it was dying because of some weird reason. She thinks it has to deal with animals and wants them to take a look at it. The group decides to head to her orchard. Elsewhere, Jamie and Logan sneak out from their rooms in the middle of the night and head to the kitchen to meet with Maddie again. Maddie is scared but she manages to explain that every other day, the people here send someone beyond the barrier as an offering to the animals. They have a vote every day and the people are allowed to choose who leaves the place and who stays. Just as Maddie finishes explaining, the men from earlier arrive and stop them once more. Logan and Jamie try fighting back but Logan is soon overpowered. Jamie scrambles and manages to sneak a spray from the kitchen counter during that time. As soon as Mitch and the group reach Alyssa's place, they are soon called into action. A man named Bill is getting delirious with pain and no one knows what it's all about. Mitch and Jack heads to a place and see Bill suffocating. At first they don't know what is happening but soon see that the man had swallowed a literal snake. The snake seems to be alive and Jack managed to take it out of the man's body. They then take the snake back to Allison's lab and Mitch starts performing the tests. He manages find out that the whole aquifer supplying the water to the orchard was filled with toxic glass, which was actually the shed skin of these mutated snakes. The glass had puissened the water and was causing the orchard to die. Using the captured snake and the new information, Mitch manages to devise a potion that would only affect the snakes and not the humans. He even demonstrates this to Allison by drinking the potion himself. Just then the snake manages to knock over its glass cage and escape, causing panic throughout the ship. Jack comes to the rescue and since the animals don't attack him because of his mutation he manages to recapture the snake but his secret is now revealed to everyone else. 
Back in Karake, the crazy people's voting begins and they choose Jamie to be their next food offering to the animals. Logan tries to offer himself as well but the people decide to vote for Maddie instead. The next day, Maddie and Jamie are taken to the edge of the barrier, and just before leaving Jamie hands the spray to Logan, and asks him to blow the barrier with it. Jamie and Maddie are then sent outside the fence and are soon surrounded by polar bears. Thankfully, Logan blows up the fence and the bears start attacking the people inside the fence instead. Logan, Maddie and Jamie find shelter inside a nearby bus. Morgan tries to beg for their help to enter the bus too, but Jamie doesn't let her in and allows her to be devoured by the polar bears. A few moments later the bears start banging against the bus's door, so Jamie decides to get out and let herself be sacrificed to save Logan and Maddie but luckily for her Mark and Mitch and Jack arrive just in time GNS blazing and save her. Finally after so many days, Mitch and Jamie reunite and Jamie and Logan are taken back to the ship. Jamie seems to have gotten some trauma after having to kill two people within the span of the few days, and when she hears the news of C.H. Lowe's death she isn't very pleased. She too blames Markin for her friend's death. Jack then demands the secret from Allison, since they had already helped them. Allison then retrieves a strange newspaper called the Worldwide Sea Our Ear. This newspaper seems to explain all the phenomenon happening in the world at the moment. Animals going crazy, sloths making earthquakes and all that stuff seems to be described in the paper. The only issue is that the paper was from 1895. This could only mean that all of this had happened in the past as well. They decide to use the paper as the source of information and find the next casualty before Davies does. They find that the next event would be a massive hurricane caused by jellyfishes in the coast of Portugal so they decide to go and gather the specimen jellyfish so that Mitch could test it and hopefully find a cure for all the animals and Jack as well. They then fly over to Portugal and just as the plane reaches the turbulent stormy skies Jamie confronts Markin. She straight up starts punching the army woman. Markin keeps her cool for some time but when Jamie starts going for it, Markin humbles her soon enough. The plane finally reaches Lisbon, and everyone is ready to go meet a guy named Santos who has promised to give them the jellyfish, which he claims to have captured. Allison however forbids Jamie and Logan from going because she wants to see if Jamie and Logan are actually trustworthy, especially Logan. Markin, Mitch Jack and Abe then go to meet with Santos who appears to be an animal collector. He claims to have made anti-venom for tons of animals and needs one more animal as since he it died. In return for the jellyfish he asks them to go and fetch for him the animal from one of the local underground locations. The animal is the most venomous tarantula. Mitch and the crew ask him why he doesn't send his own men. But Santos claims that he did send them but they all died so if they can get him the spiders he will give them the jellyfish. The man hands them some of the anti-venom and asks them to be on their way. The crew then heads to the strange dark place filled with dead bodies and a swarm of spiders. Jack and Mitch capture the spiders while Abe and Markin stay on the lookout. They almost get into trouble but somehow manage to escape with the spiders that Santos requested. When they reach Santos's place however they realize that Santos had revealed their location to Davies. The man had tricked them to do his job and brought in Davies' men to take them away. But Jack manages to release the spiders before he hands the box to Santos and soon the spiders start attacking everyone in the room. Jack battles it out with the huge guy sent by Davies to capture them while Emich steals the jellyfish. During the first, Jack goes a little overboard and uses his superhuman strength from the mutation and beats up the man pretty severely. Markin sees this and now having known that Jack suffers from the mutation, almost shoots him but Abe calms her down. The whole crew then head back to the plane with the jellyfish in their possession. Elsewhere Davies goes to interrogate a man to coerce him into helping the Noah objective. The man is none other than Robert, Mitch's father. Subscribe and hit that like button to help our channel grow. Turn the notifications on so you won't miss any of our new videos. Thanks for watching.